What's up everyone, welcome back to Fisher Hex. And in this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to connect your Aquamars Chinese LED lights and your SB Reef lights to your Apex controller. I'm gonna go ahead and take these lights apart one by one. I'm gonna show you a couple ways to do it. We're gonna install them on the BDM modules. Then we're gonna get into Apex and I'll show you some basic program to get them started. All right, so let's get into the equipment. All right, so I actually had to go out and buy some additional equipment due to the fact that I ran out of varial speed ports on the Apex itself. Now. I have uh, four JBO pumps hooked up to the Apex already, so that's four variable speed ports, and that's all it comes with. So I had to go out and buy the actual uh, dimming modules themselves. So I got two of those and three cables that we're going to use to connect the lights individually. Now I do know that you can connect the lights um, via daisy chain, but I don't feel like doing it that way. I'm just going to do each one individually. Uh, for more controllability that I want to do personally. But you can daisy chain, I believe, depending on the light, uh, two or three before it actually starts impacting the, uh, the color, not the color, but the power that the light actually receives. All right, so just to bypass all that, I'm gonna go ahead and just do uh, each light individually. So we're gonna use three out of the four available ports on both these modules, and we're gonna use the three cables that I picked up there. But I'm also going to show you how to do the Ethernet cable so you don't have to buy those if you don't want to. All right, so let's get into the build. All right, this is one of two Aquamars that I have over the reef tank. I'm just going to go ahead and take it apart real quick. No reason to have you guys watch me do that. Just going to be a little bit of fast forwarding. But taking everything out, the hangers, all that good stuff so we can get inside and start dealing with the wiring. All right, now that we have all the screws out on the side, we're going to go ahead and open it up. But real quick, just to note that this is the blue side and then this is the white side. All right, so let's just go ahead and open it up real quick. All right, I'm just going to set it like this. I don't really feel need to take it all apart. All right, so we're actually going to focus in here on these dimming modules. So let's zoom in and get a better look. Okay, so the first thing you want to, you'll notice about this is that, that it's all attached and a lot of stuff is zip tied in. So the first thing you want to do is actually take this little module out and by doing that you actually have to go over here and pull this knob off all right and then that will expose a screw so what you're going to do is just take a pair of pliers do the screw a little bit all right remove the bolt and then the actual dimming pod itself will come out all right so go ahead and uh, do that on both of them Okay, the next thing you want to do is just take the zip tie off of there, just cut it off, get it out of the way so you can actually see these labels a little bit better. I'm hoping you can see it on the camera here, but uh, there are four wires. There's an on and off wire, as you can see, it's labeled here. And then we have the uh, voltage wires, negative and positive. Okay, so what you want to do with the Aquamars light is go ahead and we're going to connect the on and off wire together. All right, so what we're going to do is just cut that wire real quick. All right. Pull it out and then we're going to strip it and put it together all right so we have our on and off wire here i'm just going to connect them with a butt connector just to make sure that they are together all right let's get the other end in there i like to double up on the wire fold it over itself that way it has a little bit more grip on the connector itself and just do a little test tug to make sure that it's on there. All right, now that we've connected the on and off switch for both the blue and the white side, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna connect the actual dimming cable itself. Now this one's from Apex and it has the wires already ready to go. Now please note that you do not need, at least for this build, you do not need the uh, yellow or green. So you can just tuck those out of the way, cut them off either way. But also note that the red is the negative or ground and the black is the positive. So go ahead and just keep that in mind when you're doing the wiring itself. So let's go ahead and get this started. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and feed the wire into the light itself. So since we have these opening holes here from where we actually had the uh, twisty knob switch there, we're just gonna go ahead and put each individual wire through there. So we're gonna go ahead and put this one through. This would be for the blue side. Go ahead and do this one real quick for the white side. All right, so let's go ahead and wire them up. All right, the next thing you want to do is connect the corresponding positive and negative wires from the dimming module to the actual apex cord itself. 
Uh, just note that don't rely on this actual pattern on the wire because on some of these lights, they're not always the same. So just uh, keep an eye out where it's actually connected here on the uh, uh, dimming module itself and then make a decision from there. Or you can just do one at a time to make it easy, which I'm going to do itself. So we're going to go ahead and do the negative first, which is here on the left hand side. So we're just going to run and cut this real quick, strip it, and we're going to connect it via butt connector to the apex. All right, so we're going to take our red cable from the cord itself. Remember, it's the opposite. The red is the ground and the black is the positive. So we got our ground cable here from the dimming module. We're going to connect it to the ground here on the apex cord itself. We're just going to go ahead and clamp that down. I always like to clamp it twice just to make sure it's good to go. And, of course, do a little test tug. All right, it's time to do the positive wire here itself. Go ahead and cut that real quick. Strip it. All right. Pull the wire down on itself. Foot connector. All right, we're going to connect the positive wire from the apex to the positive from the dimming module. All right, just a quick recap on what we've done on the blue side so far. We have connected the on and off switches together. We've also taken the positive red from the apex and connected to the positive here. And we've also taken the ground from the apex and connected it to, to the ground on the uh, 10 volt. All right, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and do the white side. All right guys, one quick note. If you can solder these ends, go ahead and do it. The butt connectors are good, uh, but they're not always guaranteed to make the proper connection. So if you are able to solder, go ahead and do that. And then um, either use tape or you can use a little uh, screw on caps there. I did have a problem when I went ahead and tried to connect this up originally. The uh, butt connectors weren't making a complete connection. So in hindsight, I would have just soldered them in the first place. All right. All right, now that we have both sides connected to the corresponding wires, you're gonna go ahead and do some cable management to make sure that it stays in place. Now, one thing you can do is go ahead and tie a little knot into the incoming cable to prevent it from actually going back out. All right, also what I'm gonna do is zip tie these together and then zip tie them to a cord here just to kind of hold everything in place. All right, now that all the cables are good to go, we'll go ahead and button everything up. Uh, just remember that uh, this is the blue side and then this is the white side. All right, if you have to label, go ahead. But if you've been using your light for any period of time, you're gonna know uh, what, what side is what, just by uh, repetition. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just put all this back together. All right, guys, that's our first light. It's good to go. Uh, please note that this is the Aquamars version. So what I'm gonna do is finish my second one, and then I'm gonna come back with the SB Reef light, and we're gonna go ahead and do the differences in setting that one up. All right, now it's time to do the SB Reef light. I'm gonna go ahead and take it apart. All right, the screws are out and we're ready to go. Same as the Aquamars, this is the blue side, so let's go ahead and take it apart. All right. So again, remember, blue side. All right, so we're in here. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this just so we have a little bit easier room. All right. Now, the dimming modules are actually over here. All right, just like the Aquamars, we gotta go ahead and take these knobs off so we can undo the uh, the actual driver itself. So let's get that screw off there. This one. Right out of there. All right. That way now you can go ahead and lift up the actual driver itself. Okay. Wipes. Get the blue out of here. Awesome cable management, by the way. You can definitely see the quality difference in this light compared to the Chinese one, for sure. 
All right. So here's the actual module, so let's get a closer look. All right, now that we have the dimming pod visible, I'm going to go ahead and explain the difference between the Aquamars and the SB Reef Light. Now, if you notice, the Aquamars had four wires, all right? So uh, those four wires are actually, if you remember, were a positive to the 0 to 10 volt and a ground to the 0 to 10 volt. Then it also had an on and off, all right, which you connected together. Now, with this one, it only has three, which is a 0 to 10 volt, a ground, and an on and off. Now, note that the ground is going to be a common ground. We're actually going to connect them to both the uh, apex cord and this on and off switch. So we're going to go ahead and cut this uh, ground first, and we're going to put a butt connector on it, and I'll show you how to connect the other ones. Okay, so I've connected the ground wire to a butt connector and just clamped the one end there. All right, now the next thing you want to do is we're going to take the on and off switch, which is the bottom wire here. We're going to go ahead and cut that. All right, and we're going to splice it real quick. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this little piece of wire that I made and we're going to connect that to the actual on and off switch. All right, so it's connected there. Now you're going to go ahead and connect that in the butt connector. So you're going to connect the on and off with the ground. All right, so go ahead and get that in there. So this is what we got left over. So basically the on and off are connected to the ground. Then we have this little wire here left over, which is the com part of the common ground, which will uh, connect to the apex cord itself. So let's go ahead and get into the apex cord connection. All right, so I just ran the apex cord through the actual light itself. Remember, we don't need the yellow or the green, so I'm just going to go ahead and snip those off. Also remember it's opposite. The red is going to be the ground, and the black is going to be the positive. So let's go ahead and strip these wires real quick. All right, the next thing you're gonna do is take the common ground wire that you added that little cable to, and we're gonna connect a butt connector to it. One more clamp. All right, now since that is the ground itself, we gotta connect it to the ground wire on the apex. All right, now we're gonna take the ground wire on the apex and connect it to the common ground on the SB Reef Light. So we're just gonna go ahead and throw this in here which is the red, Snap it down, make sure the test tug is good to go. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut the 0 to 10 positive here and then connect it to the positive on the apex. All right, guys, let's do a recap on the wiring here. We went ahead and took the on and off switch and connected it to the common ground. Then we took the common ground and connected it to the ground on the apex cord. And then we took the 0 to 10 on the SB Reef Light and connected it to the uh, positive on the Apex cord itself. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do the white side real quick. All right, I just finished up with the white side. Now let's get the light back together. All right, those of you who do not want to buy the Apex cord, which is understandable, they're a little expensive, you can go ahead and make one on a network adapter. Now, uh, starting from the left-hand side with a clip pointing down, you see the color of the wires here. The only wires that are being used are 3 and 4 and 7 and 8. Now, three is the ground, four is the zero to 10, and then the seven is the ground, and the eight is the zero to 10. All right, so if you uh, hold that clip just like that, you can go ahead and uh, follow the color wire and use that accordingly, all right? All right, guys, here a quick look at the actual pods installed on the back of the tank. I actually had to put them on the wall just because the cords themselves were not long enough from the lights, but that's no problem. I just daisy chained everything down to the apex, worked out just fine. All right, guys, I've already installed the lights, connected everything back up, went ahead and installed the two modules, also connected them to the Apex. So once that's all done, let's come back here to Fusion, and now we got to get in here and set up the program. All right, so we're going to go into our Apex here. Uh, the first time you connect these modules, you're going to have to come over here and drag down the various speed ports. They're going to come up with some extra um, like uh, switches here. Forget about those. Just pull down the various speed ports. All right. So I already went ahead and pulled them down over here to the left-hand side. Now there are two switches per light, obviously the white and the blue, the white and the blue, and the white and the blue. And then I uh, named them accordingly left, middle, and right just to make everything organized.
All right, the next thing you want to do is determine how you're going to power your lights. Uh, if you don't already know this, the uh, dimming will only go down to 10%. Of course, you can go up to 100%, but the lights will never actually dim down all the way to uh, 0%. You actually have to manually turn off the lights uh, at night. All right, so what I've chosen to do is take my all my white channels for all three lights and connect them together and use one outlet on the uh, EB8, on the Apex, and the same thing with the blue. So uh, let's go into that first just to determine and clarify how I do that. All right, now that we're in the outlet that controls the white lights, it's very simple programming here, guys. Uh, basically, I want my white lights to turn on at 10 a.m., and I want them to turn off at 2130. Basically, they'll be ramping in between there, but they will finally turn on and off uh, at that time. All right, so go ahead and just hit update, go back to uh, the blue. So we're going to move into that. And I'll show you what I got going on there. It's the exact same thing. But again, I have my blues coming on earlier and staying on later. You just need to adjust that here in your programming. All right. So, so hopefully that makes sense. And let's move on to the next thing. All right, guys, let's get into the actual programming of the variable speed ports. Now I'm going to break it down uh, piece by piece and uh, so it makes sense. All right. So let's just get into the blues here. All right, so once you've figured out what variable speed ports are connected to what light and you have already named them accordingly, uh, let's move into uh, the blue channel here. I'm gonna get into the program. Now guys, I'm not using any storms. This is the bare bone basics. We have a sunrise, a sun basically during the day, and then the sunset. Now these are the times that I have set up for that, all right? Uh, we don't need to get into times. Basically, we're just gonna focus on the profiles. You can use the exact setup. You can change the times whatever you want. But let's get into the profiles themselves. So let's get into uh, B Sunrise. What is B Sunrise? Uh, come to the other, uh, basically the older uh, version of the Fusion. It's the original uh, dashboard. You're going to come over here to Configuration. You're going to go ahead and go to Profiles. Now, uh, there's a lot of stuff here. Let's just focus on one thing at a time. We're looking at B Sunrise. What is B Sunrise? Well, it's a ramping control. Okay. Uh, the time in which it will be ramping is 60 minutes. The starting intensity is 10%. Remember, guys, the uh, lights will never go below 10%, so there's no reason to even start any lower than that. All right, so 10% is the starting intensity, and the ending intensity is 70%. All right, all right, so let's go over and go back over here. So that's sunrise. Let's go over to uh, what's B Sunday. All right, we're going to go over here. What's Sunday? Basically, again, it's a ramping control. I just keep it that way. Uh, the time at which it ramps is zero because we're never actually going to ramp. Uh, starting intensity is 70 and ending intensity is also 70. So basically, it's just going to stay at 70% all day long or whatever designated time you have for it. Okay, so that's what Sunday is. Now look at Sunset. All right. Now, again, I'm using a 60-minute uh, ramp time. All right. And the starting intensity this time is going to be reverse. You're going to use 70 percent, basically whatever your max percentage you are throughout the day. You're going to have that be your start intensity. And again, guys, you're only going to go down to 10 percent. OK, so that breaks down the blue. All right. So let's go ahead and move back to here. So I went ahead and did that for the left blue. All right. So basically we did it for this one, which is left blue. Uh, mid blue is going to have the same. Uh, sorry, mid blue is going to have the same thing, and of course, uh, right blue can have the same thing. All right, let's go ahead and move into the whites. All right, so again, guys, I just made different profiles. Basically, B for blue and W for white just kind of makes it easier to understand. Guys, it's essentially the same thing. We're just doing it at a different percentage. So we got our variable various times here. You can adjust that. So let's go into what's W sunrise. Uh, w Sunrise is, again, a ramping control. Again, we're going to use a 60-minute ramp time. Starting intensity, is, of course, is 10%, and the ending intensity is going to be 50%. I only run my whites at 50 at this point in time. It uh, just seems to work out well for me. All right, so let's go into what uh, uh, W Sun Day is. Again, ramping control. It's not going to change throughout the day, and it's just going to stay at 50%. Okay, And, of course, let's look at the sunset. Again, 60 minute ramp or ramp down. And then you have our starting intensity, which is what we are at all day is 50. And then of course our ending is at 10%. All right, guys, a quick recap. We are using an EBA outlet to control the whites and an EBA outlet to control the blues. Now those outlets will control the initial on and off time of the lights themselves. Again, remember it only goes to 10%. You can't ever go lower than that. 
Uh, once we get the lights on at 10%, we can come into here and our profiles will dictate the time in which the light is on. All right, and then you can set up your profile, which you create in the original dashboard that will determine what happens during that period of time. All right, so this is the bare bone basics, guys. It works out good. Uh, in the future, we'll do storms and all sorts of stuff like that. But right now, this is the basics to make it work. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it made sense. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, guys, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Later.